I learned how to tune a Ford EcoBoost. We're going to talk about it. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and I've been taking the Elite Tuned School Ford EcoBoost course to learn about EcoBoost tuning and I talked uh, briefly in a previous video about I was going to do some behind the scenes kind of looks into the courses and things like that and so I want to go ahead and do one on a platform for a lot of you is going to be something that we're not used to using and that is Ford much less the EcoBoost because Ford is so much more different than GM. I had some misconceptions. I've learned a lot already. I'm not even all the way through it, but let's jump over to the whiteboard, take a look at the course, see some of the stuff that you get. And we're going to look at one chapter in particular that I think that you are going to find super interesting. At least I did. And this thing, as you can see, I am 72% complete on learning how to tune a Ford EcoBoost. Uh, and I really like the way that they've broken all this down. We've got the different chapters here. Uh, it resumes where you're at. And as you can see, I am in the middle of speed density, uh, table adjustment on the course here. And if we go back to the dashboard, this is what it looks like whenever you have a course it gives you the option to see the overview and resume all that jazz. So make sure you check out EliteTuneSchool.com down below in the description. Not only is there a link, there is a discount code that you're going to want to use to save a little class, but okay. cash. But let's get back into this. I'm super excited. If we open up our... Nope, be quiet. So specifically on this one, we're going to take a look at what is hey guys, Lambda. Welcome back to the Ford Eco This thing blew my mind. In this video, we're going to be and discussing We're Lambda. going to kind of jump around. I'm not going to submit you to 12 minutes of listening to this entire block from this course. I want to touch on a couple things that I found very interesting and very different from how if you have a background in GM tuning, this is not going to work the same. We have wide bands on Fords. But the way that they work with commanded and actual and stuff and your fuel trims, completely different. So we're going to see Stoic AFR. The Stoic AFR is the only time you're ever going to see AFR reference in a Ford calibration. Very interesting. And that is simply just to set our Stoic base air fuel ratio so that the ECU can reference Lambda to that value so and that kind of makes sense we do the same thing on the gm side of it we got a stoic uh either parameter much like this or we've got a stoic afr table if we're running flex fuel this doesn't really get into flex fuel and we're not going to talk about that much but it served the same purpose here and it's 1408 because it's assuming probably e10 uh it'd be a 1467 if it wasn't uh factoring for the uh 10 percent ethanol in there but you've got to keep in mind this thing since it is a wideband and it is in lambda that it doesn't really care about that because one lambda regardless of the fuel that we're running gas e10 e50 e85 whatever one is always going to be the perfect burn the stoichiometric what does that basically mean so Years and years and years ago, our pump gas had a stoic value of 14.68, right. meaning there was no ethanol found in our gasoline. So that basically meant that it took 14.68 parts air to burn one part fuel for what's called a stable or optimized combustion. Now, most of you know that point, so we'll skip ahead to some of the more interesting stuff in here. So, all that up until this point makes sense. If you've been in the tuning game even for a couple months now, and you've followed my advice in the past that we want to learn in Lambda, AFR is the old way of thinking. We're, we're, we've kind of switched over to that. Uh, you're you're going to be uh, on board with what's going on here. So, this is where it gets really interesting. I'll show you how Ford uses Lambda. So what you're gonna notice as we are basically idling and cruising, you're gonna notice that our- Now I want you to pay attention to our EQ commanded. You'll notice 
you're not used to seeing it move around that much. And in fact, we generally see it at one and then whatever our PE set point is. EQ kind of hovers at 1.0. And the green and yellow ones in here that he's looking at, those are our wide bands. Now, one thing that's kind of funny to keep in mind is equivalency ratio is actually very different than Lambda. So it's kind of labeled incorrectly inside of the HP Tuner software, but you can think of EQ as basically Lambda. And you see the Lambda symbol right next to the EQ. But EQ is actually the inverse of Lambda. Without going too far off topic, that's why a lot of the tables that we see where we're setting our PE Lambda ratio, we're actually doing like 1.1 to get 0.9 Lambda as our commanded. And that's a whole other separate topic that really doesn't even, you guys don't even need to uh, pay attention to. That was more of a GM thing. I agree. But keep in mind, EQ is what you're looking for inside of the ECU, but it is basically Lambda. But as you're, as we're at idle and part throttle, we're pretty much always going to be targeting this Lambda of one. Now what you're going to notice is our EQ command is bouncing all over the place. Well, why is that? How the Ford ECU works is it's going to move the EQ command around to meet our target Lambda. And you're going to see it's going to reference our field trims. So if our field trims are negative 10%, you're going to see this go way leaner to keep this at a 1.0 or vice versa. If these What? <laughs> so if our field trims are negative 10% because we're rich, we're going to actually see EQ commanded change. These are lean, you're going to see the EQ command go richer to maintain this 0.9 uh, or this or this 1.0 lambda. That's awesome. As we get closer to wide open throttle, you see we move into, we go from stoic to power demand. Once we hit power demand, you can see we're kind of hovering around this 0.83, but you can see our trims are actually a little on the leaner side. So this almost works inversely of how we're used to doing it on GM, where we have a command and we're looking at our wideband and we're adjusting our airflow to get to uh, to get our actual to match the command. This one basically looks at the wideband reading because it's native to the ECU, and then the commanded changes as it adds or subtracts fuel to hit what's in your tables. So we're never technically looking directly at our fueling command from the tables like we would be. It's, I, I mean, it all of it makes more sense as you go through the different steps of this course and kind of wrap your head around how the fueling works. And, and one of the big things that I, I really wanted to get into and, and talk about on this short little video is we talk about EcoBoost uh tuning because there's so much inf in interesting information on this so i if you're interested in this i would highly take the course if you have an eco boost or or you want to get into ford tuning because a lot of this this is map based tuning versus mass airflow based tuning there's two on the fords the a lot of the coyotes are going to be mass airflow, but some of them aren't eh, like the voodoo. I don't think is like, it's all dependent on it. But if you're wanting to get into the Ford ecosystem, even this course is very good for getting in there and explain, because whenever you dive into a Fortune, don't get weighed down by all of the map point tables for spark was really interested in how that all worked out. Kind of mind blowing there. And then same thing on the VE stuff because the wide bands in this system do so much heavy lifting and we can do so much in the modifier tables without having to really dive in there this alone this course alone will save you so much time especially because it is a torque based ecu and that's where things get a little bit more tricky and we've got a whole section down here uh that talks about you know torque management and all that jazz and and so there's an hour of this course is just 
talking about increasing boost on EcoBoost and how torque management comes into play and how that works with the throttle body and stuff like that. But very interesting stuff. And I know you're probably going to have some questions. Hit up the comments down below. I'll be paying attention to them. I'm sure the guys over at Leap Tuned will be. Uh, thanks to Brandon for putting this together because it was really an illuminating uh, course. And I'm going to finish it. Whenever I finish it, we'll circle back around and talk about a couple different things that I've seen going through this that I thought were very interesting. And that would be interesting to you guys who are, are learning how to tune. So once again, hit up the description. The link's down there. The, the coupon code's down there. Uh, give us the feedback. Give me feedback. Give Leap Tune School feedback. I'm always interested in what I can do better. They're the same way. And hopefully this will help some of you guys out because it was very mind-blowing for me. Listen, you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.